Let us go into the house of the Lord. And you should be glad. <laughs> Amen. You should be glad just to be in the service one more time. Amen. Let us bow in a word of prayer. The eternal God, our Father, we are thankful for just another opportunity to be in the land of the dying on the way to the land of the living. Uh, to be in the service one more time to give you the glory and the honor that you alone are worthy of. Lord, we ask now that you would let your Holy Spirit come and move me from this place that in my stead a vessel you can use and will use to speak to your people. Oh, Lord, hide me behind the cross that they might not see me, but instead hear from thee. Yes. This is my prayer in Jesus' name and for his sake. Let everyone say amen. Amen. And amen. 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 Say amen. Blessing and honor all belong to you. Amen. 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 And you know, really, um, to get into a good praise from the Lord, you, you have to. First, divest yourself of all concerns and put your heart and mind on him. Uh, even if you're handicapped, you don't let that stop you. <laughs> even if you can't sing, you don't let that stop you. Even if you don't have your praise clothes on. <laughs> I wish you had a witness. You know. Some of you will never know real praise because you can't let go, uh, you know, of the things that you consider important at the wrong time. I wish I had a witness. Sister Ware said some things this morning in her, in her teaching. Yes. Amen. Things that even a preacher, amen, can respect and say amen to. I wish I had a witness. Rooted and grounded in the word of God. So we praise God for the spirit of praise in the house. Amen. 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 Spirit of praise in the house. And I, I will say that uh, last week we had praise and worship. Amen. Amen. And uh, we had a lot of visitors here. Amen. And they didn't come to, to view the uh, interior of the church. They didn't come to appreciate the flowers growing out front. They didn't come to appreciate the land that we own on this side of this side. They entered that door to praise and worship the Lord. <laughs> and as they say, you ought to have been there. And that hit that preacher. Tell me, Deacon Phillips. That hit that preacher so hard, the praise and the spirit that was in the house. That he preached out of himself. Amen. And that's what you want. That means he got out of the way and the Holy Spirit had something to say. Amen. And we were blessed. At one point I looked around and everybody was on their feet. Everybody. Amen. And that's the way it should be. When, amen. When the Spirit and the Word, I heard you say, that's the only thing that really feeds us. Amen. You understand? I, I ain't talking about McDonald's. I ain't talking about Cracker Barrel, I ain't talking about MCL, I ain't talking about your, your own hand. I wish you had a witness. And some of you probably some good cooks, but your own hand can't sp feed you spiritually. Man does not live by bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. And some of you are stuffing your face on what you like, but you're not eating what God has for you to give you the spiritual strength the spiritual discernment that you need Amen. to live this life. I wish you had a win. I wish you had a win. You know, you know sometimes I, I pause. Because we got the name holiness on the back. Come on now. God's house and on the back of of our denomination, how on the back of how we got the word holiness. Come on, come on. Come on. Yes, sir. Yes, Lord. But a lot of folks don't know what holiness is. Oh, I wish I had a witness. Right. Right. I wish I had a witness. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody mentioned ceremonial. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Yes. 
in the Sunday school class. Uh -huh. yes, Nothing we're supposed to do is supposed to be ceremonial. That's right. All right. Everything we do, we do in sincerity and truth to the glory of God. And what separates it from ceremonial, because see, ceremonial is routine. Like someone said, you can come to church on routine. Well, it's Sunday, I got to get ready to go to church. Some, some folks go to church to be seen. Amen. Uh-uh, nothing we do. You have to do it because you love the Lord. You can't sing blessing and glory and honor all belong. And you don't have it in your heart. It ain't coming from here. Because it don't mean nothing. Not to God. I don't care how beautiful the church, how big the choir, how dynamic the preacher. I wish you had a witness. It has to come from the heart. From the love of God. Amen. Yes, indeed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Lord is good. Somebody said his eye is on the sparrow. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh -huh. I know. Uh -huh. yeah. Somebody said he knows the petals on the flower. Yeah. He knows. Yes. He knows how many stars are up in the sky. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Yes, he knows. He knows how many grains of sand are on the beach. So don't think he don't know you. And he don't know me. And he knows what you bring into the table. And he knows what you leaving on the table. He knows what you whisper. He knows what you talking about. I wish I had a witness. So you got to come clean with God. Because you can't fool him. You can fool other folks. You can say that you're a Christian. You can say you're a follower of Christ. Hey, man, you can say it. you know the Bible, the 66 books of the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation. Hey, man, you can dress yourself like you're a Christian, put a robe on, a cross on, but you will not fool God. Because man looks on the outside. God knows what's happening in the depths of your heart. I wish I had a He knows our weaknesses. Amen. They don't need to hide in anything. Somebody wrote something just as I am. <laughs> Somebody said, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my mother, not my father, but it's me. I want you to work on me so I can be right. I ain't worried about what's in somebody else's eye. Lord, get it out of my eye that I might see and know and understand that you are God and that I need you every hour. I wish I had a witness. I haven't even got to the message. And y'all done ushered in the Holy Spirit. I heard some of you straining, amen, trying to sing the best you can to God. If you have your Bible, turn to the book of Job, 14th chapter. Job, Old Testament, familiar passage. That first 14th chapter, the first verse, and then we'll go to the 10th down to the 12th. Praise the Lord. It says, man who is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. But we go to the 10th, it says, but man dies and is laid away. Indeed, his breath, his last. And where is he? As water disappears from the sea, as a river becomes parched and dries up, so man lays down and does not rise. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. The Lord out of blessing may be seated to the hearing, reading, and understanding of his holy and most righteous word. Amen. We're going to use for a thought today, getting a clear understanding about death. All right. Getting a clear understanding about death. And 
You know, as I say, preachers draw from everything. Everybody. And of late, I've had Paul's to be around death. Yeah. I was in Louisville the other day at a funeral of one of my cousins. I think it was Wednesday. Son grows that. I drove down and he was eight, eight years old. Member of the Methodist Church down there, and he, he lived a full life. 88. The preacher preached. There were many ministers there from Nashville, from other parts of Kentucky, and a host there, and I was from Indianapolis. There was another minister there from Indianapolis. But the life he had lived as a servant of the Lord was right. such right. that right. <laughs> we didn't need to say too much All except right. hallelujah. Okay. Yeah. He was amazing. But more importantly, he was a child of the king, and the reports kept coming in what type of Christian man he was, All right. that he would help anybody, that he was so faithful to his church. I didn't know that he sang mm. and sang for God down there. They talked about how he would get up with, and sing in the choir and also sing with another brother in the church. I said, man, you're amazed. You know, 88, that's a powerful number. Yeah. I wish I had a witness. Yes. Yeah. Got a report. One of the young boys who was well, a young man who had grew up in my church. Yeah. My the first church I pastored, he had passed recently. Last week I couldn't make the funeral. Yeah. I was on program to, to be there, but I couldn't make it. But he was just 42 years old. Lord, right. Bless his heart. Then I got a report and I told Tony, a phone call came in that a brother that had been a great friend and minister. He had served as a deacon. He had also served as the business manager of College Avenue, which you know as Oasis of Hope. Mm -hmm. right. He was a godfather to my youngest daughter. He passed. No, no. And he had been in the hospital and on dialysis. And I'd call him periodically and we'd talk. And he didn't mention how, what he was going through all the time. But sometime when he did, I said, whoa, man. But yet, he could he continue to praise God. Amen. And then I had Paul to stop by St. John yesterday Amen. to uh, show my respects for the Miller family and the passing, I guess, of one of their members. Mm -hmm. I think she was 90, 93 years old. Four, four three or four. Amen. That's a number beyond what yes. most of us will make. Yes. Yes. But I had to know that I know a lot of people on these sides, so I knew deacons, I knew some folks. My family was all up in St. John. But the thing to note that I had to pay attention was, normally, when a person gets that old, they don't have that many folks to come in, because most of their folks have died off. That's right. That's right. It'd be the, maybe the family and a few. This place was packed. Yes, it, was. Yeah. it was packed. The members were on, on, in, in service, the ushers. Yeah. It was packed. Yes. Yes, it was. Now, what that told me about her life, yes, because folks don't come when you're mean and evil. Come on. <laughs> I wish you had a witness. Folks don't come if they don't like you. Folks find a reason not to be there. Right. It said something about her Christian walk Hallelujah. that the whole church yes. and others were there to acknowledge yes. the life that she had lived. Man. I wish you had a witness. Man. Praise the Lord. Point is that death is a part of life. Yes, it is. Yes. And we are going to be dealing with death from family members, friends. could be our friends, it could be our, our sibling, it yes. could be our children, yes. could be our neighbors. You're going to deal with it. And, and then when you die, guess what? They're going to have to deal with your death. Yes. I wish I had a witness. Yes. So we find here that Job establishes and tells us, well, life is but a few days. Few days. <laughs> uh, but he doesn't mean just days, days, because like I say, it can go to 94, it can go to 88. It can go to 42, it can go to 10, yes, it can go down to 1, it can go before when the baby pops out and takes one breath. That's it. That's it. Come on. Right. Make it plain. Right. Yes. Hallelujah. So it is according to Scripture. Uh -huh. so, but man will die. Oh, yes. And we will, die. we will die. The Bible gives us three references to death that we need to pay close attention to. 
And one, of course, he's talking about the physical death. Yes, sir. Amen. That's when the body ceases to function. Right. Amen. That's when there is no life in it. According to Scripture, if we go back, we realize said the, the Lord God breathed the breath of life into man. Yeah. Amen. And man became a living yeah. being. Yeah. But we know in Ecclesiastes, it tells us that when the body dies, right. amen, it goes back to yeah. dust, yeah. but the spirit goes back Hallelujah. to God. Amen. That's how we are set up and made. Yeah. Beautifully and wonderful, but we have a point that we will not pass. Some of we don't know when, that's right. but there's a, a time that's appointed to man to, to die. And that body will cease to be. Yeah. I wish I had a witness. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. The, the second death that it makes reference to is the spiritual All right. death. And the spiritual death doesn't mean that you're necessarily physically dead. Come on. I wish I had a witness. That's right. Spiritual death is when someone is separated from God. Amen. 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 They refuse to acknowledge and to obey to yield to God. And you know, some real nice people. They don't go to church. They don't want to hear nothing about God. Amen. They work with you. They're in the family. They've been inside a church since they were little when they were forced to go, maybe. They're spiritually dead. Nice as can be. But if you seek knowledge from a spiritually dead person, you're not going to get it. Because they're not connected to the true vow. Amen. They can't get revelation knowledge and they don't open the Bible. They're spiritually dead. I wish I had a witness. We all know somebody like that. We're family. Amen. Then the Bible makes reference to uh, eternal death, an eternal right. death. Lord Jesus. Hmm. An eternal death is one where a spiritually dead person mm -hmm. who is now physically also dead, dead uh -huh. right. will not throughout eternity Lord be Jesus. connected but rather separated from God. I wish I had a witness. Y'all yes, praying with me, aren't you? Amen. You understand the dynamic here? Yes. Amen. Because see, we, we think death is old, just that's the body, that's it. And the world says, well, somebody said, eat, drink, and be merry. For right. tomorrow you may die. Yes. Amen. Some folks try to be gluttons about life yes. and get everything they can get yes. on this side. Yes. Amen. Because true enough, you will never see a Brinks truck. No. Hey, follow the hearse, will you? Amen. The reality is that death is a part of life. Amen. But now for us, it's for the world, that presents a problem. Because if they don't believe it, then they live it that way. But we know, according to Scripture, that there is a difference that we have to acknowledge. We only need to look at John 11. And then we talk about what Jesus said to Martha. Yeah. Said, I am the resurrection. No, I wish you had a witness. Yeah. And the life. Yeah. Hmm. Say, he who believes in me, yeah. though they were dead, yet shall they live. Yeah. I wish oh, I had a witness. Man. And then we only have to stop by a familiar passage of scripture. John 3, 16. Oh, For God so what loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that what? Whosoever believeth in him All right. shall what? Not perish, but what? Have everlasting life. Amen. 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 Somebody wrote a song said, everlasting life is, is free. free. Then they said, I'm so glad what Jesus gave it to me. Yes. Everlasting life yes. is free. free. And then we reminded in John 10, 10, Jesus stated, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Now the problem with that is the misinterpretation of that. Amen. Because people have misinterpreted that abundantly, we have spawned what they call prosperity. Yeah, gospel and teaching. That is that God wants you all to be rich. God wants you all to have 
the finest of everything and going to help you get it. I wish I had a witness. You're going to pray. Now, that's big, y'all. Don't you think it's not? There's some ministries because folks, well, that's all they want to hear. In a capitalistic society, get it while the getting is good. And then later on, you get the kingdom. Man, folks will step on each other and grab, steal, kill, do whatever to get a bunch of abundance. Get it. That's it. Ask yourself spiritually. God knowing that too much of anything will kill you. Yes. Yes. Amen. All you have to do is look at Hollywood and look at, at uh, the music industry. How many of those folks end up dying from doing too much of what they got money to do? I wish I had a witness. Access. Amen. Getting mixed up in their decision making. Amen. Because they've got a whole lot to deal with. Yeah. I wish I had a witness. The Lord. the Lord wouldn't admit abundance knowing it's going to kill you like that. Have mercy. Amen. Yes. That you might be able to enjoy this life from a spiritual perspective based on his spiritual strength in you. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. All right. you know, when you get older, you come up with one clear principle. Yeah. You find out that less is more. Yes, sir. I wish you had a witness. Yes, Young folks think more. But we understand that less is more. Is more. Less. That's called for us, you know, the word they use is moderation. Uh, 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 amen. amen. But you know that if you eat too much of something, too much of amen, it's going to cause you some problems. Yes, <laughs> I wish I had a witness. Oh, yeah. If you do too much of something, yeah. it's going to give you some issues. Yes, amen. But God teaches us that all things in moderation. The only thing you have to worry about is praising the Lord. Amen. You can praise him praise the sun go up to the sun go down. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's right. We have to understand that to appreciate life, you have to understand what death is all about. All right now. Yes. Amen. Amen. 94 years is a long time. Yes, it is. Amen. Yes. 88 years is a long time. Amen. On down. You can bring it on down. But the 20s and the 30s, even the teens, our young people have trouble, yes. amen, trying to live, amen. No trying God. to be able to enjoy the blessings Hallelujah. of this life. Hallelujah. Amen. I stopped and talked with Destiny the other day All right. about, listen, you got to appreciate and realize how blessed you are. Oh, yes. Amen. Don't get caught up on what folks say or what they do. That's right. It's your life. My father told me, he said, don't let anybody live your life for you. You live it for yourself. Yes, but we learn to live it through following Jesus Christ. Amen. And by following him, he lives in us. Yes. And he helps us to be able to distinguish what is and what is not. Uh, yes. I find myself sitting on my deck in the back of my house that I had to paint. My wife wanted to paint it. Amen. Yeah. And, and, and sit back and just enjoying the evening. Or in the morning, coming out there with my Bible and Rest. just enjoying. And, and not on the Sabbath, just, just every chance I can get. <laughs> Appreciating, Appreciate. amen, the simple things. Yes. Amen. And eventually the mosquitoes will drive me in at night. Yes. But listen, I can appreciate God's creation amen. and that I have a place. Amen. It was just over a week ago. That was in an accident that could have took my life. Hallelujah. But God's grace, yes. God's mercy, yes. God's love yes. said, not yet, Trotter. I still got some work for you to do. Hallelujah. I still want you to enjoy some of the things that I bless you with. Oh, yeah. See another sunset, yeah. another sunrise. Yeah. See the birds fly. Yeah. To look at my wife yeah. and enjoy the kids. Yeah. Listen, life is for living. I'll call you. When I call you, you answer. But in the meantime, just be reminded that death is all around you. But it can't touch you as long as I've got you. I wish I had a witness. Some of you think you're living this life, but you're not living this life. Because if you did, you'd dance into this house. <laughs> Amen. You'd make sure that you didn't wore your deodorant out today. You'd be kind of sweaty. <laughs> No, Amen. Yeah. You'd be trying to patch your hair down because it didn't got loose. Yeah. Amen. You might make sure because you will praise God. Hallelujah. 
because he gave you another day. Glory. Ain't worried about the little things. It's the big thing. Several people have been in, engaged me this week. And they've been me and just starting conversation. We end up talking about God. Amen. Yes, Amen. He is the I don't know what made him. One guy was from Gary, musician. But she was a musician that had played for, he went to school with the Jackson Five. As own group, he played for Muddy Waters out of Chicago. Hey, Amen. He played with, for the Temptations. He had, when he started naming the list, man, I said, wow. Hey, Amen. One of the Jacksons was in his, in his class. Another one went with his sister. Another his brother ran with one. He said, I know them all. He said, but I've been blessed because he's just two years younger than I am. Had a, he played bass, put out his phone, and showed me where he was on stage playing, I don't, I don't know which, which one of the groups. And so we were talking about God and how good he is to allow us. I said, man, you've really been blessed. Amen. He said, yeah, brother. He said, I've been blessed. He said, but you've been blessed too. Amen. We took time in Walmart in the, in the, in the, where, the, where the fruit was to give credit to God. Amen. And he told me, he said, well, he said, two young guys is back there laughing at us. Yeah. And he was clean and I was clean. You understand? I said, I ain't said whoever was back here. I tell him wherever I go. Yeah. Hey, Amen. We found it party. He said, it's good. You know what he said? It's good to know another human being. Amen. <laughs> right. hey, because we are a rare breed now. Yeah. That's right. That's right. People who love the Lord, guess what? It is not popular in America. Amen. Yes, sir. That's right. Thank you. But we realize we're getting older. Death is right around the corner. I ain't going to look back for me after catch me. Because right. right. I'm going to praise it. I'm going to live this life. I'm going to bless the Lord. And I'm going to bless somebody. Death helped us appreciate what God has given us. We forget about it and think that it's not a part of life. And guess what? We don't do what God has called us to do. We don't enjoy it. He said we don't set the Sabbath day and rest. Come on now. She taught that today, didn't she? Yes, sir. Said to renew yes. yourself, yes. to restore yes. yourself, yes. to give you a chance to catch up. This life is so fast, it keeps you moving. Thank you God. don't have time. Yes. And then finally you fall asleep. Mm. Then the next day, that's why they call some jobs a slave, because huh. yes. you got to go and do what they want you to do. Yes. But you must first do what God Save. wants you to do. Save. Now that you make his, your enemy your foot, he'll make your job, guess what? <laughs> Nothing but a blessing for you. Amen. I wish you had a witness. Amen. But right, tell me about it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. When he gets to testify about he said the Lord kept the job off of him uh, and allowed him, even when he didn't know it, to keep on going and to keep on blessing him. Amen. Only God can do that. What am I saying to you, church? Hallelujah. Yes, death is a part of our life. Yes, it is. And our physical will die, but our spirit won't. It won't. God owns that. Yes. And you want to make sure that you're not eternally separated from him. Amen. And don't mean you don't want to be spiritually dead and physically alive. Come on. Amen. Uh -huh. And that's what I think sometimes what happens with even some of church folk. That's right. You're spiritually dead, but you're physically alive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. <clears throat> I told somebody I couldn't be <laughs> in the house the praising God Amen. and you know preachers sometimes I've been to churches and I'm just there for whatever reasons and you know sit back and sometimes preachers will watch but you know when folks are praising the Lord you don't think about whether you're a preacher or not <laughs> That's right. you don't think whether you're 90 years old or not right. they're praising God <laughs> And you're going to get in there and you're going to praise, you're going to sing, you're going to shout, you're going to do something. Oh, yeah. Amen. Because you know that is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. All good things come from God. Yes. The author and finisher of our faith. Hey. The yes. sustainer of our life. Yes. Amen. Amen. When you lay down, when they do a surgery, and you think the anesthesiologist puts you to sleep, 
He may put you to sleep with the medicine, but it's the Lord that wakes you up. <laughs> Woo, I wish I had a witness. Anybody know what I'm talking about? What a mighty God we serve. He is a mighty God. Yes. Now, death should not fear us. It's the doorway to eternal life. Amen. To be in the absent from the body, be to be present with the Lord. With the Lord. There'll be many more, Jesus. amen, wakes and funerals that we'll have to go through mm -hmm. until finally it's our turn. Come on now. But God amen. Us. Don't go in there, shed tears if you have to. Amen. Because you won't see them anymore on this side. Yeah, give God the praise that you have it. Hallelujah. Some folks never did get a chance to know him. Amen. 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 And enjoy. Yes. Amen. That's what, enjoy. Yes. I went down to Louisville to that to represent generations. Uh -huh. my, Lord. my grandmother's people. Uh -huh. You understand? They've had 70 or 80 or maybe almost 90 family reunions. Uh -huh. And I've made at least 60 from my little age. Amen. So I knew a lot of everybody. And they knew of me. And it's a big family. My Lord. But they're starting to dwindle down. Because oh, yeah. as time goes by. Amen. Yes, but it's our responsibility to honor those things. Give oh, honor yeah. to whom honor is due. And we should honor our ancestors. Amen. And we should keep our families informed and engaged. Amen. Amen. They call around the country. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the few of the grandchildren, she's almost 90, mm -hmm. there from Indianapolis on a, on a walker. My Lord. Another cousin had picked her up and brought her down so she could be here. My Lord. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. She has encouraged me to keep preaching because she gets the message. And she says, yeah, I guess in amazement because I was one of them little guys always busy. Amen. She said, I'm enjoying your word. Amen. 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 Touch my heart. Amen. Yes, Amen. We don't know our walk Come on. can be a blessing. To someone. Amen. Right. Especially to those who can't get out anymore. Amen. Amen. We have to go and talk about visitation. Yes. We got to get to them. Yes. Amen. Amen. Deacons, I got a man right now that can't walk. Mm -hmm. He's got a good spirit. And I told Tony, I said, well, I said, I'm going to get deacons. We're going to go over and we're going to pray with this brother. Amen. Let him meet these brothers. He said, well, he got a pastor, he got a church. I don't know, he probably does. I don't know anything about that, what they're doing or what they're not doing. But I know if we come together right. representing Jesus, we might pray to his feet. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But you got to be doing something for God. Faith without works is what? Yeah. Amen. You've got to get the Spirit's going to lead you. Yes. If you follow your own program, you are not connected to the Holy Spirit. I wish you had a yeah. witness. Amen. Because they're going to lead you to pray. Yes, sir. Yes. Amen. It's one thing you can do. You can't do everything that everybody can. We can't all move like these guys. I wish you had a witness. But I know we can pick up that phone. Oh, yeah. huh? And pray over the phone. Amen. I wish you had a witness. And I know if we take our time, we can get, amen, if we can get to the mall, if we can get to the, to Walmart or Kroger's, yeah. we can go and visit somebody that needs an encouraging word. Yeah. I tell everybody, I, when I come to a service, I am the post, I am the card. Amen. Some people give you the card. Well, I'd rather see the card. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'd rather hear from the card. Yes. Somebody else wrote that, and that may be good. But guess what? When you say it. Amen, show up yes, Lord. and say, God bless you. My brother, my sister, encourage. Amen. Wish I had a witness. Praise the brother Lord. stopped me yesterday and asked for 75 cents. I reached in my pocket and gave him several dollars. I said, you only asked for 75, but here's some more. Amen. Got to bless somebody. Hallelujah. I wish I had a witness. Amen. Amen. Got to bless somebody. Oh, yes. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. What are you doing? Yes, sir. Are you spiritually dead? Have mercy. But you're still alive? My Lord. Mm. Amen. Jesus. Are you spiritually alive as well as physically alive? My Lord. Amen. Let's make sure yes. that we're connected to the true vine. Hallelujah. That we're in communication through prayer, through yes. fellowship, Amen. forsake not to assembly. You just yes. heard him say, talk about what they used to do in the south, but they're still doing some of that stuff in the north. Folks have just got lazy, that's all. That's 
got comfortable. Come on, Amen. Amen. Pandemic has been gone. Come on. Amen. Glad to be in the service one more time. Well, one more time can be several times. Yes, sir. They're all good times. Amen. When you enter those doors to worship, yes, sir. and then you depart to serve. Sure. But guess what? If it's a once a week thing, then guess what? The Lord's got the devil got six days to beat you down. If you missed that Sunday, now he got Sunday too. It's two weeks, 14 days. I wish I had a witness. Guess what? You ain't gonna be spiritually strong. I can guarantee it you won't because you ain't fed on spiritual food. You ain't been around the fellowship of the saints. Amen. Iron sharpens iron. Yes, it does. We reaffirm each other. And we need that. Thank you, Lord. And so I need you. <laughs> you are part. Yeah, we need each other. Yes, we do. Your absence does not go unnoticed. That's right. But your presence means so much. Amen. Let's make sure that we keep God in his house. Amen. Amen. Take him with us when we go. Huh? Yes, Let him lead and order our steps. Hallelujah. And when that time comes, guess what? The life you live will preach your, your funeral. Yes, <laughs> Amen. 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 And preach your funeral. Yes. Folks will just reaffirm yes. the life yes. that you've lived for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Don't have to make up nothing. Sometimes folks make up. Uh-uh, you don't have to make up stuff. When you get four, five, six different people to say the same thing, amen. They said when my cousin was getting sick and couldn't come, when they called, what he couldn't do, but he said, well, what do you need? Amen. Because he's still trying to bless, even though physically he can't be there to bless. I wish he had a witness. Let the Lord use you till he use you up. All right. I guarantee you on that great day you'll hear, well done. Well done. <laughs> good well, done. well done. Somebody had a song that she used to sing that Sister Cunningham said, I'll be somewhere listening <laughs> for my name. <laughs> you know, when I, I close with this, when I played for IUPUI, <laughs> we were talking to a guy there, a salesman the other day, and uh, he found out he went to cathedral. And uh, he was telling me, and I told him about uh, playing for IUPUI and Christmas addicts. You throw Christmas addicts, anybody over 35, 40, 50 years old, and they know that's, you know, that, that's some respect coming. Amen. Amen. And uh, when we were talking, amen, and it came out that uh, I had played for IUPUI, amen, and I can remember in the second year, I was all conference. Mm -hmm. And came time, all those guys out there, the guy, they called the names off. And I just assumed that. I wasn't even thinking. Since I started, that I would be on the team. Mm -hmm. This year, one of the white boys leaned over to me and said, said, Drew, I don't think he called your name. Mm -hmm. I slipped back and said, yeah, I did not think. So I went in. Coach was sitting there because he was waiting for me, him and the assistant, ain't it? They had a plan. And I said, well, coach, I said, I said, you called my name, didn't you? He didn't say no. Uh -oh. He said, and I know we'll forget some things you never forget. He said, well, Jerry, which you don't call me. I ain't never done call me Jerry. My name is Gerald. <laughs> you understand? He said, well, Jerry, we feel we've chose the 12 best ball players for our program. Now, that was a shocker. I looked over to the black coach. I'd helped his son get back on the team. You understand? Got him in shape. <clears throat> I looked at him to see if he's going to stand up and say something. And he said the same thing the coach said. <laughs> I'd been somewhere listening for my name, but I, didn't, I wasn't paying attention to my name. All right. Amen. You don't want to be somewhere listening. You want to know your name Amen. is called. I ain't going to leave you with the story like that. <laughs> As the Lord would have when he's on your side, even when you don't understand it. Yeah. I just said, listen. I said, you know, I have to appeal this. Make a long story short. The dean of the school got involved. Mm -hmm. The newspaper of the school got involved. Because they covered the games in the past. <laughs> and had to put me back on the team. Had to put me back on the team. Uh -huh. 
and then act like they were glad that they had me. Mm, Amen. Yeah. I knew it wasn't right, but God will put you. Yes, he will. Amen. Where you supposed to be? Right. Folks can lie to you and set up all kinds of things, That's right. but God is the one that decides. Amen. Right. Amen. That's why you want to be listening for your name. Amen. And you can make sure your name is in the Lamb's Book of Life right. if you commit your life to Christ. Yeah. Amen. He'll put you where nobody can take you away. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Later on, <laughs> later on, so you know the, the story, I knew the situation wasn't going to be right, yeah. no matter what I did. One scrimmage, I scored 37 points, had 17 assists, about 10 rebounds. He still was over there praising some other kid. Mm. Got the brothers together and told him, said, listen, y'all stay together. Said, I'm going to concentrate on my books. I said, but just like he's done me, he's going to do you. Right. For the, before two weeks were out, half the team had left. They fired the coach. Mm. You understand? It cost, it cost us some things. Later on, to show you the goodness of God, what, 40 years later, there had been a brother on that team who was on the committee for the uh, Hall of Fame for the whole school. And he'd been trying to say, well, you know, the team that we were on that had trotted in them, that was the first team that helped build the program. They should be in the Hall of Fame. And here we were, we get a call, Tony will tell you, said, it's going to be at the country club up here on 38th Street. The whole team, the coach had to fly in, everybody, and act like, hey, how you doing, Jerry? I said, listen to this. What he meant for evil, God meant for good. Yes, sir. We all smiled and taking the picture yes. now forever enshrined in their hall of faith. That's how man will do things. I ain't interested in their hall of fame. I want to make sure I make heaven. All right. I want to make sure he calls my name. Yes. He can say number 14 if he want to. Right. As long as he said Gerald Trotter, uh -huh. come on up. Yes. You've been faithful over a few things. Come on up and let me make you ruler over me. Yeah. Ain't worried about death. Hmm. I'm looking forward to everlasting life. Yes. But until then, I'll work while there's day. Because the Lord, when night comes, he'll tell me that's it. Amen. Come and take your rest. Yes. There won't be any more I can do. Yes, sir. But I want to say I did the best I could Amen. for the master. God bless you. I pray something was said today that encouraged you and lets you know death is just a phase that we all have to go through. But we got the promise of everlasting life from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us come to our feet.